Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Tuplex. Today we're going to be working on making slag slurry to try to use up the stone and crushed stone and slag that we have. Actually, not stone, but crushed stone and slag. Um, so that we can start to get rid of some of this waste material and turn it into something useful. Um, before I get started though, I just kind of quickly want to address this situation here. Um, I'm going to pick up those empty barrels because we have empty barrels going in here and then right next door, we're requesting empty barrels all the time. So it seems kind of silly to not put those up here first and then perhaps overflow into there. So that's what I want to take care of uh, before we get started with the other stuff. So I'll put a... No, I'm going to have to use an inserter because I don't have enough room for a loader here. Okay, that's a bad spot for a power pole. Uh, there we go. Actually, this is a bad, this is a terrible spot for everything that I'm doing right here. Um, yeah, I think it'll be better if I just come out here and that way I actually have some room to move things okay so what we could do is let's get an underground going up there Let's see. And I think I'm going to need a red one here. All right. And these can actually probably just be fast inserters. I don't think the numbers are going to be so high. Okay, so we'll start sending all of our empty barrels up there. Um, let me turn this off. And I want to... I want to get rid of the empty barrels that I already have in here as well. So I'll just dump all those in there. Actually, we can get the get the acid out of there too. Okay, and then I'll just put a loader here to empty those out. So those will go up here. All right, so now, now we're somewhat blocked. Um, right, so let's put, let's put a chest there. And then I'll just empty it out with a loader. Okay, and then I'll put that there, but what I'm going to do is wire that up so that we'll only use this when this chest is full. Um, so this has got, what is that, a steel chest? No, that's an iron chest. So that's got 32 slots. That means it can hold 320 barrels. So we'll enable that inserter when empty barrels are greater than or equal to 320. Okay, so that way if the chest ever gets full, then the empty barrels can get emptied into the silo to get taken back by train. Um, and until then, they'll come up here and, you know, if they fill up these chests, that's fine. Then we just won't request more empty barrels. And that'll make things a little bit easier. Okay. 
Um, I think that is the... I think that's the only place we are making empty barrels over here. If I'm not mistaken. Let me just check. Yeah, that's the only place we're emptying barrels here. Okay, good. So let's get started um, making mineral sludge and turn, turning it into useful things. Um, let's see. Yeah, so if we do, I think what we're looking to do here is slurry ceramic filtering. And that'll give us the sludge. Let me just check here. Yeah, so slag slurry is made from acid and slag or crushed stone. And then the slag slurry itself can be used in that filtering recipe to make mineral sludge and more sulfuric wastewater, which we're already barreling up and getting rid of over here. So this kind of ties in nicely with that. Now, once we have the mineral sludge, we can put that into a crystallizer and we can turn it into a variety of ores as well as mineral catalyst. All right, so that's what we're gonna do with that stuff. So, um, let's look for a good spot. Um, I suppose we could use some of the area up here. In fact, maybe over here would be a good place. Oh, or actually I've got plenty of room over here as well. Um, yeah, and I already have I already have the stone and the slag coming up here. So maybe I can, well, it would be nice to make it closer because I do have the sulfuric wastewater that I need to send back here. So why don't we do the why don't we do the filtration over here somewhere close by? In fact, I could I could probably get rid of this track up here. So let's say I set up four of these. Okay, well before we do that, we need first we need to make the mineral the slag slurry itself. Okay. Right, so the slag slurry comes from chemical plants, and it lo looks like it's a one-to-one -one ratio between the chemical plants and the filtration units. All right, so let me make, uh, I've got six filtration units. Let me make six chemical plants to go along with that. Um, one, two, three, four, five, and I need some steel. Okay, and six. All right, so what I'll do is I'll have, I'll have a belt coming out here, and then we'll bring slag over as well. And we have acid right there, uh, which is fortuitous. Let's put these right next to each other. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. And, um, or actually, I think what I should do is put the chemical plants here. And then we'll put the filters elsewhere. Okay. Actually, let me make two more of those. So what we can do is we can use four to make to make slag slurry from crushed stone. And then we can use four to make it from slag. Like so. 
All right, so these are going to take sulfuric acid as an input. So we can just uh, divert some of that down here. Slurry is going to come out on this side. And let's see what kind of inserter horsepower we need going into these things. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like we're going to need stack inserters to keep these running full time. Um, which makes me think that maybe loaders would be an even better idea. Let's see if we can find a way to feed these with loaders instead. If I clean up the pipes a bit. And actually, let's just use stone pipes. One, two, one, two, and one, two. So let's look at input in terms of items per second. 14.5. All right, so a yellow loader will be not quite enough, but it'll be pretty close. Yeah, so let's just use red loaders going in to each of these. All right, so we'll flip those around. Um, now if I've got four going in, then that means I need four coming out in order to keep that fed. Okay. All right, so these are the ones that are making it from crushed stone. Uh, first, let me give this some power. I'll just put the power poles there, and then we'll throw in some lights. Okay. This is going to be a little bit awkward. Actually, it would be better if I just fed it over from the other side, wouldn't it? All right, so let's let's copy these pipes. Again, and this time we'll just take the loaders and we'll put those like that. Okay, I'm going to stop feeding crushed stone into here because I want to move it. So I'm going to use my arrow keys, that wonderful trick. All right. And then we'll do that. Okay, and I'm running 
out of space. So let's move this up. Can't move that one. mess. I'm not super proud of this. Yeah, and it's still not really helping very much, is it? I need to get this out of the way. There we go. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so we're making the slurry there. Let's um, let's throw this into a tank. We put our one-way valve. Let me find a non-return valve here. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna start chewing up crushed stone. And then we can do the same here with slag. Although in this case, um, I think I am gonna feed it in from the other side. All right, so let's put one, two, three, four. And three, four. do is I'm going to reverse this. Okay. So that way we can start to empty this warehouse and then we can get rid of that there. All right. Now we're probably going to need to put some controls on this stuff so that we don't I don't know if we want to turn all of our slag into slag slurry or if we should keep some. And, but, but if we're going to use it all here, then that means that I don't need to put it in a train station over there. So let's see what else slag is used for. So I'm going to right click that. Okay, yeah, we need it for concrete. And that's it. Yeah, so I think we do still want to put some out on the network. But not very much. All right, so what I'll do is uh, I'll hook this up. And we'll turn these on as long as slag is greater than let's say 5,000. All right, so if we have more than 5,000 slag, we'll send it to get turned into slurry. And we can do the same for the crushed stone. All 
One, two, three, four. And we'll turn this on if crush stone is greater than 5,000. Okay. And then eventually these other warehouses will empty out and we can start to get rid of those. All right, good. So we've got the slag slurry being made and it's probably consuming quite a lot of acid. So I have a feeling that our supply of acid is probably gonna be what's limiting us there. But the good news is that we're gonna start making more, um, more sulfuric wastewater here pretty soon. So it's all good. Let's, uh, Geez, these are full too. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna have to start making crystal slurry as well. All right, so let me get uh, a few more filtration units. Is that in water? Petro, let's see, where are the... Ah, here they are. No, I want... I want filters, right? Or do I want crystallizers? Yeah, I want filtration units. All right, so I need two more. There we go, filtration units. And that's what we're gonna use to make the slurry. All right, and I think we'll set that up over here somewhere. So first let me get a pump on this. Power that up. Throw a light there. Okay. And then we'll set these eight up. Two, three, four. And then I suppose we'll do some on the other side too. All right, and these are going to, uh, you know what, I think it'll be, actually I think it'll be better if we do these all on the same side. And we'll do ceramic filtering. That way we don't have to bring in coal for the filters. Okay, and that fits rather nicely. Uh, okay, and I need purified water. Okay, well, that's no problem. We've got purified water too. But first let's set up the, the input of the slag slurry. And then the purified water can come in there. And we'll do power poles like that. All right, so let's copy that. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now we just need to get the purified water over here. And we have purified water. Uh, where? That's purified water, and it's coming over here. And all the way up here. Okay, aren't I, am I clarifying purified water somewhere? Over here, okay.
Okay, so it looks like we're currently using all of the purified water that we're making over there. And I don't have any extra, so I'm going to need more purified water. Now, I thought I was barreling it somewhere. Probably, yeah, that's down here that I'm barreling the purified water. Okay, yeah, down here I've got more purified water than I know what to do with. So we could bring in, we could bring in purified water from outside. We've got saline there. All right. Yeah, this is our only requester station. So I could request purified water over here and bring that in. So let's do that. Well, no, I think that's silly. Uh, I think it would be better just to make more of it. And I'm clearing, clarifying a lot of saline water because I've got far more of that than I actually need. And yeah, here I'm not making any purified because I am missing... No, it's because because the saline water over here is backed up. Okay, so that means that my chloric wastewater is being clarified because that's backed up. Okay. So if I clarify the extra saline water that I'm making over here, then I'll be able to make more purified water. But then I'm going to be making saline water just to clarify it. Let's see. I need to I need to only turn this off. I need to only turn this on when I don't have chloric wastewater. I think that would be the best way to do this. And I think there's a way to do that. So if I put a pump there, um, I could put I could put an inline tank over here just to, or actually we could use we could even just use a check valve. Let's see, check valve. That's that green one. So it's actually not really a valve, it's just something that you can hook a circuit up to to measure how much fluid you have. Okay, so then we could tell this to run when, when chloric wastewater is less than, let's say, 100. Okay, so this won't make any more saline when there is chloric wastewater present. And then I can put an overflow valve down here and clarify the excess. So it doesn't get backed up. 
that way we'll make more purified water. Okay. And then this purified water is coming over here. It's coming down here. And it's getting added into the rest of the purified water over here. Okay. So this way we can get more purified water than just what we need for the for the flotation cells. And hopefully we'll use up all the chloric wastewater that we have. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap into this here. Actually, let me, no, I don't think I wanna pump. Um, this would be a good place for an overflow valve too, I think. And then a pump. Okay. Okay. This might not give us enough. Okay, well I got that really wrong, didn't I? I wanted that to come over here. Okay, good. So now we've got purified water and we've got slag slurry and all we need are the ceramic filters. Um, and actually over here, I think it might be a good idea to, to have a, an inline tank just to buffer up some of the water. All right, we'll do it that way. Uh, so let's make another non-return valve. That way we can store some up. Okay. And that way we can accumulate some when we're not using it. All right. So here we're going to have two fluids coming out. And we also need to get filters in and out. Um, and that might be tricky. All right, so we need good filters in and spent filters out. I think that will work like that. All right, so that'll be good filters. All right, yeah, so, no, actually I need, I'm gonna need two belts. Well, I don't need two belts. Um, I need a loop. Like that. Okay, and then we can put power poles there. All right, now I made ceramic filters before. Um, here we go. Yeah, so I need alumina, and then I need filter frames. Oops. Let's see, filter frames. Okay, so let's make 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. 
70, 80, 90, 100. All right. So we got 100 filter frames being made. Um, I think I have Illumina up here. So we'll need 100 of those. I think it's 100. Yeah, one each. Um, yeah, there it is. All right, and then we can make 100 ceramic filters. And hopefully that'll be enough to keep the loop full. All right, and then to clean the filters, I think we need, f I think that takes purified water too. So we'll be able to use the same supply of purified water, I hope. I might need to add more purified water production at some point. All right, and then we can also put some lights there. All right, so let's copy that. Good. All right. And then let's put a machine to manage these filters. Yep. Purified water. So let's get some purified water down here. I think we just have one in and one out. Now the spent filters are gonna go on the outside of this belt, which then becomes the inside of this belt. So this filter needs to be going on the near side. Okay, so let me load these up with filters. And let's see what happens. Okay. That looks good. And then those will eventually swing around. All right, so now we just have to deal with the wastewater and the sludge. So the sludge, we already know what we're gonna do with. Um, the sulfuric wastewater we need to send back to join the rest of the sulfuric wastewater down there and get purified. Let's put more in the warehouse too. I think that would be a good idea. So let's see, what am I, how am I doing on space here? We got plenty of room. Uh, this is sulfuric wastewater. Yeah, so let's make this 8,000. I think we'll have enough to accommodate it. All right. So I'm going to wrap it up for now because uh, we're almost out of time. Uh, what I'll do between episodes is I will get the sulfuric wastewater routed uh, to join the pipeline over here, um, go into this storage tank down here uh, to be either clarified or put into barrels. Um, I think I may need, I might need another clarifier or two to handle the increased volume because three is just what we need for all of this. Uh, and then in the next episode, we will take the sludge and we'll start turning it into something useful. So until then, thanks a lot for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.